Today on Captain Fix It, we're gonna fix Insteon switch links that have gone bad. These are standard Insteon dimmer switch links that have stopped responding or even will get in a pattern of flashing the light and you can't even get it to stop. Whatever you do, it won't do anything. The problem is they've used inexpensive components that have failed. The new switch links are about $50. I currently have four bad ones in the house. And who's gonna spend another $200 on light switches? So we're just gonna fix them. The skills required are basic electrician. If you installed your own switches, then you're good. Remember to turn the power off before you begin. And basic soldering skills. I'm going to remove my switch's wires and then replace the wire nuts just to try to keep everything together and remind me where everything goes when I'm putting it back together. I have found that when electronics in the home go bad these days, it's most often because the capacitors have failed. I purchased this large set of capacitors off Amazon, so I have... Uh, most of the replacements I need. I've got my switch uninstalled from the wall. Let's start by opening it. We'll take off the switch plate cover first. Next, there are more screws under here which hold the clear case on. So I remove those. And then remove the clear case. And inside you can see our capacitor. There are actually two capacitors inside. This big one and the small one. I'm going to start by just trying to replace the big one. We see it's a 470 microfarad, 35 volts, and you can kind of see the end is bulging a little bit. That's the sign of a capacitor that has gone bad. And look at this. My big set did not have the 470 microfarad, 35 volts, so I'd actually purchased a bag from Amazon as well. So I've got that spare capacitor ready to go. I'll use one of these. I'm going to simplify and save some time in my repair by just cutting the legs off of this old capacitor and soldering them to my new capacitor instead of worrying about taking the circuit board out, which is in more steps, flipping it over and desoldering the capacitor from the back. The capacitors do have a polarity. You have to make sure you install them in the same direction. The negative leads marked with the minus signs. And on my new capacitors, I can see the negative lead. I'm gonna reach in here and snip off the legs of this capacitor, leaving enough for me to solder the new one on. And then I'll snip a new one out of my package. Now we know we need to install it this direction. So I'll solder this up. Sometimes an easy way to do this, since we only have two hands, is to get some solder on one side, on one set of leads, and then melt it against the other ones and the solder will stick to both. So I'm going to try to goop a little extra solder on my one side, and then I'm going to reach in and solder this to the leads in the board. So 
So those leads are now soldered together. I just need to bend my capacitor down into place. This one being a little bit bigger than the original capacitor in physical size. Same specs, however. So we'll just kind of bend it like that. There we go. All right, now let's get our covers back on and test it. All right, let's go install this back in our circuit and see if our repair is a success. All right, I've turned the power back on at the breaker box. And now the moment of truth. Hey! The switch is working. I'm going to turn off the power one more time at the breaker box while I put these switches back in, just in case one of these wire nuts pops off or something while I'm shoving everything in there. All right, I've turned the power back on. And I got one more screw to put in. And I've saved myself $50 over buying a new Insteon switch. I got three more in my house to go and that'll be a $200 savings. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And please like this video and subscribe for more.